It's Halloween time! Well, actually it's August. But I never quite know when I'm going to have time to edit and upload everything. So, for all intents and purposes, let's just say it's Halloween time and I'm back with another edition of Just an Opinion. And today I'm going to talk about more scary sitcoms. About a year ago, I released my top 13 scary sitcom episodes. And there were so many, unfortunately, that were left off the list. So today I've compiled another top 10 scary sitcom episodes. We get some Halloween episodes and some surprises. You're in for a real treat. Number 10 is Silver Spoons, A Dark and Stormy Night. This episode starts with Rick, Alfonso, and Freddy all set for a scary movie on TV. But unfortunately, the power goes out. Edward suggests that the boys use their imagination to come up with some spooky fun on their own, and he kicks off a round of Pass the Ghost Story. The episode then turns into a live-action version of the story being told. <laughs> the story within the story being the boy stumbling on the Stratton residence household on a dark and stormy night and Edward playing somewhat of a Jekyll and Hyde type monster. Each character narrates the story at one point, adding their own flair, altering the tone in comedic fashion. Run upstairs! <laughs> nah, that's no good. <laughs> Wait, wait, I've got it! <laughs> While sitcoms are a blended dose of reality and fantasy, it's episodes like these that show how absurdly hilarious they can be, almost making fun of their own platitudes. Number 9 is Kate and Allie, Halloween 2. Kate makes a new friend, but there's just one thing. He tells she and Allie that his ex-wife is a ghost and follows him wherever he goes, Plus, she has a real problem with him making new female friends. Kent and Allie dismiss this preposterous idea as they wish him on his way until some very strange things start happening around the house. <laughs> what is all this? The kids join them on their search for a rational explanation of all the spooky happenings. This is creepy. Remember that scene in Friday the 13th? Which one? All of them. <laughs> but logic soon turns futile as the gang tries to rid themselves of the spirit through a seance. O oh, ghost who walks and cannot rest, make your presence manifest. I heard something. In the end, the whole affair was part joke, but also part mystery. There's nobody in here. Uh oh, that's impossible. Unless. Did we just see that? Number eight is Roseanne. Boom. This kicked off the first of many Halloween episodes for this beloved series. Roseanne and Dan seem more festive and into the season than the kids. Channeling their inner child, both try to outdo each other by playing pranks. Oh my god! Yeah, you better get it. Oh, that's a lot of blood. What happened? Oh, I don't know. It's cutting some of the jigsaw and it, it, it was kind of dull. Oh, well, let me look here. You, you're going to need stitches. And they both hope that the Halloween spirit rubs off on Becky. But parental duties take precedent as she is distraught after not being invited to the party of the year. Like most teenagers, though, Becky's mood soon changes in an instant as she joins her family in the fun of their own haunted house. Meanwhile, the pranks between Dan and Roseanne come dangerously close to crossing the line. No, no, look, Connie, look, maybe I should just get myself another contractor and just get the hell out of this oh, place. Oh, come on, Jeff, wait a minute, wait a minute, what will you? What difference does it make, Dan? You said he was a big jerk in a year! <laughs> Jeff, look, I'm sorry, I don't know what the hell she's doing. I don't, I don't know what's going on, I don't know what she's doing. I'm trying to scare you, Dan. Number seven is Perfect Strangers, Eyewitness Reports. 
A convention of 80s sitcoms was Rashomon themed episodes, meaning a major action happens but the audience only sees the aftermath, and the characters all tell their own version of the story what happened, typically casting themselves as the hero. In this episode, Balki, Colson, Larry, and the gang are all set for a company retreat in the secluded wilderness. But their romantic plans are thwarted, with the unexpected arrival of escaped killer Howard Mad Dog Krause. Time's up. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> But we don't know what happened. We flash forward to the police arrival and his arrest. And Larry, Balky, and Mr. Gorpley each tell a different tale of what happened, each tale hilarious in its own right. Sorry, I got you into this, buddy. Oh, close in. There's so much I want to say and so little time. Uh, Mad Dog, could you give us a moment? Sure. <laughs> the truth reveals that Balky was the hero himself, but he's humble enough to let Colson Larry share in the glory. Oh, <laughs> I think he's finished. <laughs> Number six is Even Stevens, a very scary story. Lewis and his buds are all set for the Halloween prank of the century. But there's something strange in the neighborhood. Uh, high school, and it's all connected to the mandatory eye exams. Everyone seems to be acting a little bit different after their appointment with a hankering for some milk. What is with everyone? She's right, Lewis. You really should get your eyes checked. Lewis seems to be the only one aware of this and tries to warn everyone, but nobody believes him. Mom, Dad, Donnie, uh, when you get this message, come to school, you know, uh, not to panic you or anything, but Mom, help me, please! Come and get me! I'm so scared! <gasps> Surprisingly, Ren does, and soon they're both running for their lives from these Mooju-obsessed zombies, until it was revealed that it was Ren behind it the whole time. Actually, it's an evil man. <laughs> Welcome, Lewis. What's different about you? Just as her ultimate plan is about to come to fruition, the audience is relieved to find out the whole thing was just a story that Lewis was telling to try and scare beans. Number five is Boy Meets World, The Witches of Pembroke. Jack thinks he's found the girl of his dreams. There's only one problem. She's a witch. But she's a good witch, according to her. Why would DJ Tanner lie? Eric isn't convinced though and tries to warn him but Jack ignores him, a little too deep under Millie's spell. We're going to have a party. I'm going to introduce you to all your new friends. We're going to have fun. Fun. <laughs> Eric is sad, facing the idea of being alone on Halloween, the night that's supposed to bring everyone together. Mr. Feeney, can I crash at your place tonight? No. <laughs> Why? I'm gonna fight with Jack about his girlfriend. Same old story. Sure, you heard it a thousand times. She's a witch, she talks to the devil, and apparently I'm standing between her and the doorway to hell. You're definitely not sleeping here. Millie's diabolic plans are soon unveiled, and Jack and Sean are taken captive by her entire witch coven. Ensuring our immortality and obliterating you. <laughs> Sean, what? It's starting to get fun again. The latter is somewhat enjoying it a little bit too much. Eric comes to the rescue, his dopiness actually aiding him in the defeat of all the witches. Witchcraft for dumbbells. <laughs> yep, think they mentioned a counterspell in here somewhere. Number four is Roseanne, Trick or Treat. This episode was a bit progressive, challenging gender roles for Halloween costumes. In parallel storylines, DJ wants to dress up as a witch, and it upsets Dan. Meanwhile, Roseanne not only dresses up as a manly man, but fully plays out the part when she and Jackie are stranded at a bar. Witches are girls. Warlocks are guys. They can do anything a witch can do. They can turn people into frogs. They make thunder and lightning. They can grant wishes. That's a fairy godmother. <laughs> Roseanne, don't do this. You're just going to embarrass both of us. Call me Bob. <laughs> at first, she has fun with it. 
The one thing I want to know is what does she want with you when she's got a suitcase full of sex toys? <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke? Okay. But eventually her big mouth gets her in trouble. Big shock. Just as she's about to be pummeled, Dan comes to her rescue. While Roseanne's storyline is purely for laughs, DJ's play is very relatable, especially in contemporary times, with children wanting to express themselves perhaps differently than what society and their parents deem as acceptable. You mad at me? Nah. You mad at me? Yeah. All right. Let's go get your broom. Okay. Number three is The Cosby Show, Cliff's Mistake. This episode more so has Halloween in the background, as the main focal point is Cliff frantically searching for the power drill that his buddy Jeff lent him. I can't give you your drill. Why not? I lost it. Inconceivable! You darn tootin'. The fun part of this episode is the Huxable kids and Bud making a haunted house in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> They have all sorts of spooky tricks in place for their victims. Cliff wants to join in on the fun, but his approach is a little bit too tame compared to the kids. Here it is. It all comes together masterfully, as Cliff is their first victim. shows up, excited to see the haunted house. <laughs> well, you should have expected that. Number two is Cheers, House of Horrors with formal dining and used brick. Carla is ecstatic when she buys the house of her dreams. The only problem is that she finds out that it was built over top of a prison graveyard. She fears it may be haunted, but the gang encourages her to spend one night there to conquer her trepidations. Cliff and Norm volunteer to brave the night with her as well. Well, Norm doesn't stay too long. Vera called. She wants you to come home. Yep, I'm out of here. <laughs> Norm! Norm, come on. I mean, since when are you in such a rush to get home to Vera? Since you moved in over a graveyard, right? <laughs> Guys, look, I'm sorry. I just... I don't know. Scary stuff just scares me. <laughs> the abrasive Carla and the tentative Cliff actually share a moment when they find out they have more in common than they think. The moment, though, is almost ruined as the house begins to shake, perhaps both of their nightmares coming true. Oh my god! They're coming to get us! They're gonna drag us back down to the grave with them! just turns out that she lives close to an airport. Number one is Boy Meets World, Who's Afraid of Cory Wolf? Cory is bitten by a mysterious animal, quite possibly the missing wolf from the Philadelphia Zoo. That, accompanied by some strange emotional and bodily changes, lead him to believe that he is becoming a werewolf. Sean and Cory's family hilariously humor him. I don't see anything. Of course you don't. Everybody knows werewolf bites heal overnight. <laughs> Oh, wow, then you're covered with them. Hey, Corey, here's your supper. <laughs> oh! Meanwhile, Alan tries to teach Corey that the changes he's experiencing are all part of becoming a man. But adolescence and irrationality go hand in hand, as Corey is frantically trying to prevent his forthcoming metamorphosis. All right, Wolfie, listen. Your body is about to go through many changes. What kind of changes? You will develop the appetite of the wolf, a taste for things you've never eaten before. Please don't say head cheese, because I don't even then want it. Then the pentagram, the five-pointed star, will appear in your hand. Is it going to itch? Because if it's wool, then there's just Shut no up. <laughs> the climax comes when Corey is reluctant to meet Topanga for their Halloween date, fearing for her safety. But all is well. He may be a wolf, but not one of the werewolf variety. Thank you so much for watching and please do leave a comment. I'll be back soon. 
I'm gonna do some more Halloween stuff. So I'm gonna rank my top 10 favorite Simpson Treehouse of Horror episodes. I hope you check it out. And all I ask is for a wish come true. I never thought it would happen. Till you came in and my hopes were renewed. Take me on a joy ride. I almost feel as if I could fly. Catch me if you can, cause I am free tonight. This is a beginning, and I can feel the wind rush by. Yes, you have given.